Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zenfin Network, aka XDC, so let's just dive in. And let's start off with the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Now this is a very vast group. They have 217 projects in 76 countries. They have 461 plus staff members. They have 195 members, uh, states, and they have been promoting development for 58 years. Now, the interesting thing about this group is that they set out a major PDF. This PDF is Trade Tech, New Age for Trade Finance. It's very interesting. Now, this is through the World Economic Forum in collaboration with Bain and Company. Now, within this, it talks about the current trade finance value proposition. Trade finance processes have multiple pain points, i.e. human error, delays, verification challenges, and they do outline them here. So one, you can see here, cost incurred by significant manual labor, human error slash fraud risk, processing delays, manual procedures, risk of delays due to human errors, and add reprocessing. Uh, delays incurred in sending across multiple geos, human error slash fraud risk, hard copies increasing lead times, and then also delays and fees incurred by correspondent banking. So there's a lot of pain points, a lot of problems here. And uh, ultimately, when we look at the uh, value proposition here as well, you can see a lot of issues, causes and consequences, cost factor, along with rising trust in supply chains has prompted some companies to shift from traditional trade to trade facilitation and working capital uh, finance solutions through open account trading. That increases risk for exporter who also needs more financing of working capital. Letters of credit and guarantees are particularly unattractive for small ticket transactions and SMEs, which boast a very large percentage of global trade. Now, with this, they do outline global trade reached 16 trillion. Uh, I think the last year, uh, 2022, I think that we hit 32 trillion. So we doubled uh, within eight years um, in terms of the trade growth, which was very significant. And you could actually see the map on this. Um, and then we could also see the growth here as well. And then we also see the baseline trade growth. Uh, Doc trade expected to have 9% market share in 2026. And you can kind of see where this is uh, going. This is without DLT, by the way, says up here. Um, and then if we go down here to uh, growth as well. So we can do see $1.6 trillion unmet trade finance gap. Currently access to financing is a major barrier to global trade, which by the way, through Zinfin, you could actually access uh, more financing with uh, Impul, actually. Impul's uh, becoming a major opportunity within this, but also uh, financing instruments through digitization and tokenization, like for example, Trada, which is a trade finance token, uh, that could allow for financing within global trade through Zinfin as well, which is a huge, huge opportunity. And uh, you can actually see that access to trade finance is a major barrier here, as well as a few other things as well. Um, so big area for DLT. Now we do see DLT can improve some of the pain points faced today in doc trade, especially for SMEs. And you can see reject it. 52% SMEs face higher rejection rates driven by greater risk, uh, riskiness and lack of collateral. You can see large corporates, 21% MN, uh, MNC, sorry, 13% uh, as well. And DLT could address key barriers, e.g. KYC, uh, AML, collateral um, re requirements, and then also transaction costs. And we do see significance of barriers to trade finance according to respondent banks. And we do see the biggest one is AML slash KYC. Uh, then we do see issue in banks credit uh, rating, but then we also do see previous dispute with issue in bank. And we do see a few of the other ones here as well. Now, here is where DLT comes into play. So DLT is down here. You also see the Internet of Things, which we already know about the Internet of Things is becoming a big deal. Uh, DLT is basically a part of that, by the way. But we do see DLT uh, create smart letter of credit, a smart contract on distributed ledger, auto uh, notifications, replace document documentation, checks, data entry, validation with single digital record. Real-time verification and reconciliation uh, workflow executed as per smart contract conditions. Replace uh, payment and funds transfer with cryptocurrency. This is where you could see either one, the trade token, which is a stable coin uh, within trade finance that did get issued out on Zinfin. Or you could also even see XDC being utilized here as well, which either one works perfectly fine because, again, it's still tied to XDC because I believe XDC will become the settlement token for these payments. Then down here, distributed ledger based letters of credit could yield cost savings and real time document checking. 
Here we have the initiation, shipping and processing, and even the settlement of all of this. And remember, like this is the big use case advantage. And then we do see uh, the bottom here, which is just a World Economic Forum uh, logo. So very large use case advantage here. And we're starting to see this becoming a reality now. Uh, remember Contour? So I've talked about Contour on this channel for a while because they are directly tied to R3, which we know R3 is uh, a giant. And we actually do see down here that first off, one, Contour wins best DLT platform for trade finance at Global Finance Awards 2023. This happened back in January. Now down here, we do see that um, today Contour has over 130 members, including 20 banks on its production network spanning over 50 countries. So they're very large. This is a very large one. Now, they are leveraging DLT. They are um, a part of the trade finance revolution, obviously. And uh, as we do look at Contour, they also just announced a, a strategic collaboration with Finastra, which is very large. The interesting thing about Contour, though, and a lot of people actually don't know about this, is that they are directly tied back to Zinfin. Over here, we do see the real tipping point in the digitization of trade finance. This is actually from the CEO of Contour. In this, it did talk about digitizing the trade finance uh, industry and how it could actually support global trade recovery and growing micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, the reality is that digital adoption has been slow, though. Recently, we have been starting to see some um regulatory action being taken around digitization adoption within trade finance so i do think that that's going to streamline a lot of this um but as we do scroll down though um this does talk a little bit about the big areas of not only adoption but ultimately disruption so we do see my definition of that tipping point is when we see the whole trade ecosystem from banks to shippers corporates and their counterparties all connected on digital trade network but also global standards are often cited as an obstacle to digital adoption like, like i said like as we do see standardization um, and harmonization on the forefront of standards that could very well be the thing that accelerates the push towards uh, digital adoption. And they're even talking about MLETR, which uh, we started to recently see becoming a big, big deal. So very excited for that. Now, where does Zinfin come into play? Where is Zinfin? Right. There's no uh, talks about Zinfin here. Well, let's go over here. So this is from December 12th, 2022. And we do see blockchain, the underlying technology behind cryptocurrency is becoming popular in different sectors, including trade finance. Trade finance refers to businesses that finance global uh, trade. It comprises a complex web of players such as exporters, importers, banks, insurers, customs, and carriers. Now, this got updated in January of, uh, of this year. Recently, uh, again, I think that this is actually in... Um, I think it's because of uh, Contour winning the best DLT platform. So I think that that got added into this. But nonetheless... Here we have how blockchain could transform the global trade finance landscape, which we already know about. All of this is the big area of focus so far. But this ties everything back to Zinfin, especially with Contour. Like I said, Contour is a very large giant in the space. Uh, so we always kind of look at them because they are and have been very successful. So as we do scroll down, we do see Contours highlighted here. I have it searched up there in the top, but we do see that the potential of blockchain remains huge with the $28.5 trillion global trade market still relying on traditional uh, paper-based processes to facilitate cross-border trade. So we are essentially disrupting the $28.5 trillion market, but we're actually ultimately filling that $1.9 trillion gap, which again is very large. Now, Here's where things get interesting down here. So we do see which companies are developing blockchain based trade uh, finance solutions. Globally, major banks and enterprises form several consortia such as Marco Polo, Contour previously known as Voltron, E-Trade Connect and Zinfin's Trade Phoenix to work closely and simplify cross border trade, uh, trade finance or just trade in general. So remember what I've said. Collaboration is key. These are the main ones that are actually working closely together to facilitate these um, and ultimately settle these cross-border trades. This is huge. These solutions aim to streamline the entire trade finance cycle by digitizing documentary collection, tracking and exchanging commercial documents and letters of credit to ensure faster decision making and automate contractual agreements and the supply chain uh, process. So again, this is very large. There is also other ones that are uh, working together, but ultimately these are the ones that I mainly focus on. 
Uh, like I said, Contour's a very large one. There's also a few other ones in, in here as well. Most of these are centered on R3. For example, Contour, centered on R3. Uh, Marco Polo, centered on R3. Then we also do see Trade Phoenix, which is centered on uh, Zinfin. The interesting thing about all of this, though, is how many of these trade finance uh, solutions are built out on R3. And the reasoning for that is because we already know that Impul, which is built out on Zinfin, is a direct bridge to R3 Corda. And like I said, when we go back to that initial document and we scroll up and we talk about how these payments could be settled, settlement on DLT, I forgot where it was, but you guys probably already know what I'm talking about. Um, it was somewhere here, but settlement on DLT utilizing cryptocurrencies, it was actually down here. Uh, I kind of blanked for a little bit. Here it is. Um, but settlement on DLT utilizing XDC would be very large. And with how many applications are actually built out on Zinfin, with how many are utilizing R3 Corda, and how there's a bridge already to R3 Corda through Zinfin, or I, I should say through Impul, I believe that XDC and also even the trade finance mechanisms that are built out on Zinfin already, like trade a token, I strongly believe that XDC or Zinfin is going to boast the most amount of settlement through trade finance. I think that this is a huge bridge to R3 Corda, and with all the trade finance solutions being built out on R3, or I should say at least the major ones like Marco Polo or even uh, Contour, I strongly believe that this is going to be very bullish for Zinfin because there's already exposure here. There's already a lot of connections being created with R3 and even Contour. So I'm very excited for this. Um, there's a very large market here and we're already kind of starting to see digitization happening within the banking sector. Now, it's not all through the major names, but here's banks make progress in digitizing trade finances happened back in October of last year. This was HSBC and JP Morgan. They recently boosted their digital trade finance offerings as the ICC Center of Digital Trade and Innovation uh, commenced testing a digital trade systems between Singapore and the UK. The interesting thing about this is that ICC, WTO, Citigroup, and even Trade Finance Global recognize Zinfin, XDC Network's potential in trade finance. So we already know that Zinfin and XDC has become a very large aspect around trade finance, and it is... For good measure, listen, we know that Zinfin is a very, very large initiative around uh, trade finance and it's been offering a large amount of value and volume uh, to the trade finance uh, market. And it's only a matter of time until we start to see the door of uh, liquidity and value pouring in. And I do believe that XDC is going to be very bullish during that time because one, we already know that trade finance is ripe for disruption. We already know that by 2030 and beyond, we will likely see greater adoption with interoperability taking the digitized flows to higher percentages, but also even beforehand, we're going to start to see a large amount of adoption. We're starting to see standardization being in place, harmonization being in place as well. And it's only a matter of time. And like I said, you know, that the, the end goal of Zinfin's approach to trade finance is to improve liquidity, allow for instant settlements, also allow for, you know, digitization and tokenization to become a reality. Ultimately, Zinfin is moving a lot behind the scenes. Like a lot of people are not focused on this enough. And I really do think that XDC is one of those tokens that, it, that is extremely overlooked. A lot of people are not realizing the value here. And soon they will wake up to it. XDC, in my opinion, is extremely bullish. And I do believe that it could very well be in the top 10 within, you know, the next year or two, or even possibly, you know, much higher in the top 10 within the next couple years ahead. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. I just hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.